friend, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands on Learning. In today's video, I'm going to show you two learning activities that I have just created that are going to be used with my pre-K and kindergarten children. And these activities work on literacy skills. So if you're excited to see them, let's go. Okay, the first activity I'd like to share with you is called Auto Shop Ends. And obviously, as you can see, it has an Auto Shop theme to it. And this activity is working on ending sounds. So these are great activities for children to do during your phonics instruction or after your phonics instruction as an assessment tool. Okay, so you can assess what they've learned and if they could do it. These are also great center activities in a classroom if you, if you do centers with your students. But I'm going to be doing these with my kiddos. So after we do all of our phonics instruction, then we do our hands-on activities. And um, this one is working, like I said, on ending sounds. So they will take a card, like I have here, and then they have to find the correct ending sound. And so all of the cars that you see on these cards, they have a flat tire. So these auto shop workers have to fix the car. And in order to fix the car, you have to find the new car that has the right ending sound on it. All right, if that makes makes sense. <laughs> so here are the cards. And you can put these cards in a pocket chart that might make it easier for your students to find the answer when they're looking. Or you could set out just a couple of choices for them. Now, since this is like a maroon colored car, the answer is going to be a maroon colored car. So if you're gonna set out a couple of choices for your students, you wanna have just the maroon colored cars out. Um, so in a pocket chart, you might wanna put like all the maroon colored on one side and all the, the blue cars on another, however you wanna do it. But this is how you might do it. You might lay out just a couple of choices and you have them read fur, ah, fra, and they have the picture there so they know it's frog. And then they have to think about what sound do they hear at the end of frog. Well, here is the G and then they just place it over the um, car that needs repair to repair it. Now I have a fixed car, okay? So that's kind of how this activity works. So here's a blue one. So let's see, give a couple of choices for this one. All right, so we have, here's our picture, ball. What could it be? It's the ball. Look, what do I hear at the end of ball? I hear the L sound, All right? So that's just how they do it. They would just um, put the letters on top. Now, one other thing you can have your kids do to kind of extend the activity is if you have magnetic letters, like I do. Here's a set of our magnetic letters. You could have the children then um, make the word with their magnetic letters. So. So just an extension of this activity, if, if the kids have enough time to do it, it might make it a little bit more fun. So there you go. These are all the cards that it comes with. So there's lots of different chances for them to practice those ending sounds. Okay, and the other hands-on literacy activity that I wanted to share with you today is called Happy Day Sounds. And this activity is actually working on beginning sounds. So the last activity worked on ending sounds. This one's working on beginning sounds. So this is an activity you could probably do with uh, even younger kids. Um, so definitely with your pre-K kids. The other activity, the ending sounds, would probably be more of an activity that you would do with kindergarten, okay? Just to... FYI there, okay? Um, but obviously you know your students best, and so whatever their ability level is at, that's what you would obviously do. Okay, so this activity comes with a handful of different mats. This, each mat down here on the bottom has a number. So this says it's mat number two. Here is mat number one. Um, they're out of order at the moment. Mat number four, and this one is mat number three. And then this activity also comes with four different spinners, okay? 
So I have the different spinners here and each spinner has a number on it. So it corresponds with the mat. So whatever mat you choose to do, then you want to find the spinner with the right number. So this spinner has uh, number two on it. So it goes with mat number two. If that makes sense. Now, what I do for these spinners is I buy spinners like this off of Amazon and then I add Velcro to them. So that way I can move them, take them off and put it on another one and we're good to go when we're done using that one. Take it off, put it on another one, you get the idea, okay? So, let me just put it on this cloud. Now this is called Happy Day because all of the pictures kind of are just, just signifying it's a happy day. We have happy kids here on each mat with the smiling sun and uh, clouds. And here we have some smiling flowers too. Okay, so happy day is the theme, but the scale that we're working on is beginning sounds. Okay, listening for those beginning sounds in words. Okay, so let me see here. I have my spinner on, this says number four, so I need to find mat number four. So let's see here, that's the screen one, okay. So here is mat number four. And by the way, I put the, when I print these out, I slide them in these plastic sleeves to keep the mats safe for use over and over again. You could laminate them as well and that would work. I laminate the spinners so that they are able to be used and everything, you know, is sturdy. So anyways, let's just start with this mat here. And let me just show you real quick how this activity works. Okay, by the way, if you are looking for either of these activities, they are part of my reading fund for pre-K and kindergarten curriculum bundle. If you um, want to get that bundle now, I'll leave links below in the description box so you can check it out. You could get these uh, activities separately or you can get them in the bundle. Um, but yeah, links are always in the description box. Okay, so let's get into this. Here is my spinner. And what the children are going to do is they are going to spin their spinner and then whatever letter it lands on, I landed on S, I have to cover up a picture on my mat that begins with S. Now, there's a couple of different options that I have for my students to use to cover up their answers. One thing that I thought might be really great for this particular activity is smiley faces because it's the theme is happy day. So here we have a bunch of smiley faces because we're happy, right? So I thought that would be cute. So I would cover up the sun with a smiley face. And then they would spin again. And now I landed on you. So what begins with a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, umbrella, umbrella. So let's cover that one up. So you get the idea, they will just continue on covering up. Now let me show you another one of these mats and I'll show you some more of the manipulative choices that I have for my students. Right, let's try mat number two. Okay, I got spinner number two and mat number two. My choices, I have some, and these might be things that you actually have around your house and or around your classroom that kids can use to cover up their answers. I have some buttons here. I also have, a lot of you math teachers have counting bears. Counting bears are great manipulatives. And then one of my absolute favorites are pom-poms with magnets attached. Uh, the reason the magnets are attached is number one, it helps them to stay put, you know, so they don't roll around. And number two, if you do these activities on a cookie sheet, then the magnets will um, stay in place on the cookie sheet because they're, well, they're magnetized. So let's try this one with our um, buttons. And if, as you can see, in years past, I had put some magnets on the buttons as well because we used them on cookie sheets. They're not all mag um they don't all have magnets on them anymore, but uh, yeah, I want, that is also something else you can do with buttons. All right, let's spin and let's practice. Let's see, D, what begins with D? Dinosaur, so I'm going to go ahead and cover up dinosaur. Let's spin again, oops. What begins with I? How about I, I, inchworm, oops. So you get the idea, students would use their their buttons or whatever you have to cover up their answer after they have spun. And now the really nice part about doing an activity like this is since there are multiple um, 
mats and multiple spinners, you could have multiple children doing the activity at the same time, right? So one child could be doing mat number two and another child could be doing mat number four and so on. They could all do them and then they could switch and do each other's mats and so on. Or if you have um, this at a center, obviously you could have more than one student then at that particular center because, you know, you have multiple mats. Now what I'm going to do, I ha I'm going to have probably three of my children doing uh three three kids doing this activity and so that way I, they can be doing this activity all together um and each of them can have a different map all right so there you go those are the two activities i wanted to show you that we are going to be doing for hands-on work the next week here and this is working on all of those wonderful literacy skills to get my kiddos reading all right i hope that you enjoyed this video be sure to check out my playlists and check out all the other videos that I have where I share fun, hands-on learning activities, uh, ideas, lessons, um, and so much more. Thanks for watching. Bye!